The name of the word that we see here is called trade, or otherwise known as gifts for trading land with white people. The artist, drawn quick to see Smith, is a Native American from the Confederated Salish and Kootenai tribes of the Flatline Indian Nation. It was completed in 1992, which marked the 500th anniversary of Christopher Columbus's landing in North America. The work is comprised of a canvas covered with painted newspapers and a string of goods hanging above the main canvas. Let's first take a look at the goods. Looking closer, we can see that the goods displayed here are all things with reference to Native American culture, such as a baseball hat from the Cleveland Indians and a sticker from the Washington Redskins. These goods speak great irony because although they are not Native American symbols, they are either not related at all to Native American culture or are cheap souvenirs based on the stereotypical perception of Native Americans. These goods serve as proofs and indications of the commodification of Native American by the European settlers. There's no indication of the essence of Native American culture. What's once the pride of a nation is now left with red face cartoons on a hat made for sports played by the whites. Going back to the title of this painting, Trade, or Gifts for Trading Land with White People, it seems to suggest that the canoe in this painting is often a mission by Native Americans to trade with white people. What gifts do they bring? Cheap goods with Indian symbols made for the use and pleasures of whites. And in return, they want land. This reference back to the early days of European settlement in North America, when they took vast stretches of lands giving the native settlers cheap goods in return. Thus, on one hand, these goods referred to the commodification of Native American culture, but on the other, it serves as a satirical comment on the absurdity of trades between European settlers and Native Americans, through which the natives were forced out of their lands into exile. Now let's take a look at the main canvas. This part of the work is canvas covered with newspapers and brushed over with the strokes of paint. The newspaper cutouts are mostly from papers run by Native Americans, which detail news and trivialities from their daily lives. The paint applied are dripping from top down, leaving distinct trails and making the paint seem fluid and moving. It is as if we could see paint dripping down from the canvas and drenching the newspapers. A major color component here is red, and along with other bright paints such as green and yellow, it creates a hodgepodge of colors that look both dirty and bloody, as if it's blood that's dripping down from the canvas over the genuine life stories of Native Americans, hiding them behind the smudge while a canoe sails through these forgotten memories, carrying goods with what's now symbols of Native American identity. The piece is not only art, but a strong political statement. By using the arrangement of goods and canvas painting, Jean Quick de C. Smith reminds its viewers on the year of celebration for Columbus that below the ostensible goods and commodities labeled with Indian faces, there is an entire culture of people whose pain-filled history and stories are being forgotten, erased, and manipulated.